Hello students and welcome back to another anatomy video after we described the atlas, the first cervical vertebra. So let's move and talk about the axis and look at the comparative anatomy of this uh, uh, vertebra between the different animal species. So let's get started. And now let's move and talk about the second cervical vertebra. So the second cervical vertebra has also its own specific shape uh, and called the axis. The axis has normally very long body, as you can see here. And uh, dorsally here we have the spinous process, which in this case here we have the axis of the horse is divided caudally into two parts. These two parts of the spinous processes continued with these two processes. This is the caudal articular process. Let's move to the caudal view again. So this is here the articular surface of the caudal articular processes. Okay, so ventrally, this is dorsally. Ventrally on the body we have also the uh, ventral crest, the ventral crest. Um, like other cervical vertebra, this axis has cranial extremity and caudal extremity. In the caudal extremity at the other cervical vertebra, we have also convex, concave surface for the articulation with the third cervical vertebra. Here, cranially, we have uh, this projection here called the dens. This is the dens. And here we have the cranial articular processes. The dense itself uh, moves inside the inside the, ax, uh, the atlas and articulates, as you can see here, with the fovea dentis, fovea dentis of the atlas. So that's why we can see that the dorsal surface of the dense here is rough because here we have two depressions for the attachment of the ligamentum dentis, while the ventral surface of the dens is smooth and uh, has articular surface. Here, if we move to the lateral view of the axis, laterally on each side we can see one single transverse process, so this is one here and one here, as you can see, they are caudally directed and at the base of this transverse process, as you can see here, we have the transverse foramen, the transverse foramen, which forms from here to here to there, the, the transverse canal. Here, cranial to the arch, cranially in this area, you can see this big foramen, this is the lateral vertebral foramen lateral vertebral foramen is here is oval in the horse and is closed here with a thin bridge and now let's move and talk about the comparative anatomy of the axis and look at the differences between the different animal species as you can see here we have the axis of the camel the axis of the horse ox sheep dog and cat and let's start talking about the spinous process as you can see here in the horse uh, we say that the spinous process is single cranially thin and uh, caudally it's divided into two parts each of these two parts communicates or continue it with the caudal articular services of the axis here while well, if we move to the camel, for example, here in the camel, let's take it here, the spinous process is there, but it's not that developed like that one of the horse. And the, the caudal part is not divided and uh, it doesn't continue it with the caudal, with the caudal articular processes. So it stops here. Uh, in the ox, the spinous process is very developed here, very thick, and ends caudally with uh, this tuberosity, and it's not continued with the caudal articular processes. 
uh, the same for the sheep as you can see and as we said before sheep is a small ox so it's not continued with the caudal articular processes in the dog in the dog look exactly so the spinous process is very developed here and it has like a cranial projection cranial projection here this projection uh, is placed actually on the atlas so if we put it together so you can see that the cranial projection of the spinous process of the axis is located in normal situation above the dorsal arch of the atlas while the spinous process here ends caudally also with a small tuberosity small tuberosity and it's not continued with the caudal articular processes in the dog and again this is the case the same in the cat look at the cat exactly here you can see the cranial projection of the spinous process and the caudal small tuberosity now let's move and talk about the cranial extremity in the um, camel for example in the cranial extremity we can see the dance the dance has also dorsal rough surface with these two depressions here for the attachment of the ligamentum dentis. Ventrally, we have the articular surface with the fovea dentis of the atlas. And uh, the cranial articular surfaces or the cranial articular processes is continued here below the dense, below the dense. This is not the case, for example, in the horse. So if we go to the horse, uh, the dance is very developed and uh, the same way, of course, we have the articular surface ventrally here. But if you look at this uh, view here, you can see that the cranial articular surface here is divided here under the dance, is divided under the dance. What about the ox? In the ox, the dense has a dorsal, very deep, uh, concave uh, shape with these two depressions for the ligamentum dentis and uh, the articular, cranial articular surface is continued under the dense in the ox. Here in the dog, the dense is like a cranially pointed finger like and uh, the two articular surfaces are separated in, in between here under the dense and uh, we cannot see the two depressions for the ligamentum dentis here on the dorsal surface of the dense okay the same for the cat now let's move and uh, look at the lateral view at the foramens for example as we described before here in the horse cranial to the arch we have the lateral vertebral foramen the lateral vertebral foramen is oval in the horse is oval in the horse not sharp just a minute please so it's oval in the horse as you can see there and the cranial border of the foramen is very thin comparing to that one for example of the ox in the ox if we look here cranially we can see the lateral vertebral foramen is more circular and the cranial bridge here is very thick comparing to the uh, to the uh, horse uh, while in the camel for example go to the camel in the camel here we can find that the lateral vertebral foramen lateral vertebral foramen is doubled is double so we have two lateral vertebral foramens here and there in the dog for example this is the dog if you look for the lateral vertebral foramen you cannot find it there is no lateral vertebral foramen but instead we have a notch we have the cranial vertebral notch here where the spinal nerves move through 
Of course, we forgot to tell you that like other cervical vertebra, the uh, axis has cranially in the dog, for example, the cranial vertebral notch and the caudal vertebral notch. While in other animals, as we described, cranially we have the lateral vertebral frame and caudally we have the notch. And the same for the cat. So the cat also doesn't have lateral vertebral foramen but we have the notch okay what about the transverse foramen in the horse we say that at the root uh, or the base of the transverse foramen here we can see the transfer sorry at the root of the transverse process we can see the transverse foramen here it's not that big while in the ox we have also here and there, if you can see, there uh, are two small um, transverse foramens, and in a very few cases, this foramen is sometimes absent in the ox. In the dog, let's move this one to the side. In the dog, it's also very clear here at the base of the uh, transverse process here we can see the transverse frame transverse frame left and right the same for the cat same for the cat also two small transverse foramens i try to come near yeah so here at the base of the transverse process here and there we have the transverse frame while in the in the camel for example in the camel if you go to and look at the base of the transverse process we cannot see the transverse foramen not so it's it's not there because the transverse foramen is inside the vertebral canal i will try to show you that foramen inside the vertebral canal left and right there is another one on the other side. This is here the transverse foramen. So it starts inside the transverse canal. And as you can see, this is the external opening of the transverse foramen. Okay. So that means that means we said before that inside the transverse canal, we can find three structures. The one artery, one vein, one nerve. They are the vertebral artery, vertebral vein, and vertebral nerve. And in this case, in the case of the camel, the, if we pretend that this one here is the artery, vertebral artery, so that means the vertebral artery moves inside the vertebral canal to enter the transverse canal finally and exit the axis through this foramen here. In the in the camel mm -hmm. um, with regards to the transverse process as we said before in the horse a single caudally oriented as you can see here and there <coughs> in the ox the transverse process is very thick and ends caudally with a tubercle and scaldily with the tubercle here and there this is in the ox what about the camel in the camel as you can see is is thick but is small you know close to the body of the axis here and there this is the transverse process of the axis what about the dog for example in the dog the transverse process is caudoventrally oriented caudoventrally oriented uh, thin finger like and single even in the dog ventrally ventrally in the in the horse we say that we can see the ventral crest this is the ventral crest is very developed and thin sharp here in the horse what about the ox in the ox is more or thicker than that one of the horse and uh, caudally it ends also with something like a tubercle in this area here or tuberosity uh, the ventral uh, crest is not clear 
in the in the in the camel but we we have cow that need this to porosity here and it's very clear also in, in the in the uh, in the dog and uh, this ventral crest divide the ventral surface of the axis into two parts or two fossae two fossae left and right and this is the ventral crest